everybody. This is Fred with the Wentworth CCTV of New England, and we are here today to talk about access points and Wi-Fi, particularly in the campground and marina environment, um, which is kind of our niche market here in New England. Um, and there are a couple things to consider um, with Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is two-way communication. By that, I mean the access point and the client. The client is the user's device, whether it be laptop, smart TV, cell phone, tablet. Um, all of those devices have a wireless card. Um, it could be the new AX um, Wi-Fi. It could be AC Wi-Fi. It could be BGN. It could be um, a device that's on the 2.4 gigahertz frequency, and it could be a device that's on the 5 gigahertz frequency, which the newer devices, particularly Apple, um, prefer. Um, so there is a wide range of things we need to consider when we deploy access points in, in these environments. It's, it's not similar to any type of env environment, particularly in the campgrounds. In campgrounds, we are talking about, you know, anywhere our campgrounds go from 75 to 100 sites to, in some cases, 800 sites. And um, a, a lot of campers today are in camper shells. Uh, they're in self-contained campers, fifth wheels, mobile homes, stuff like that, motor homes. Um, so, so we want to provide them Wi-Fi so they can stream, right? Um, a lot of them have smart TVs now, and uh, that's what they want. Um, same with gaming, believe it or not. A lot of people have Xbox Ones in their campers, and the parents sit out by the fire, and the kids game at night. Um, so there's a bunch of things to consider. First of all, in a campground, um, when we started doing campgrounds, I don't know, eight, ten years ago, um, the industry goal was these big, huge access points that we would put on the camp store um, and the pool and maybe the rec hall. Um, and these huge access points, um, you know, gave off, like the 1750 EXT, gave off huge frequencies, um, big, huge access points with omnidirectional antennas, and they gave off strong signals, um, very high DBMs. Um, and that was great in open environments. If people were in a field or in a tent and their wireless card in their client, their phone, had the ability to reach the access point, it worked beautiful. But the reality is in a campground, most of the time when they're on their computer, it's in the morning time, they're having a coffee, they're in a camper shell. And the client, the the phone could not reach the access point. Um, another issue is line of sight issues. For good Wi-Fi to work, you need line of sight. So if I'm sitting in a camper, essentially I need to be able to see an access point to connect to it. Um, and in the campground, you might have a pop-up trailer or a small self-contained trailer um, with a big fifth wheel beside it, okay? So you're here, the fifth wheel's here, you're not going to see through the metal object or the fifth wheel to get to the access point. Um, so we switched our philosophy in campgrounds. Instead of, you know, a few, a couple big, huge access points, we switched to, um, you know, a bunch of smaller less expensive access points um, that are still very effective, okay? This access point is what I use in a campground. It's a cloud-managed Wi-Fi 6 access point. Um, this unit can process 1,250 Mbps, which is over a gig on the 5 gigahertz platform. Um, it can have 50 clients connected to it on the five gigahertz, between the five gigahertz and the 2.4 gigahertz platform. Um, 2.4 um, is a stronger signal, um, but it's slower, okay? This on the 2.4 gigahertz frequency um, can do about 500 Mbps. So we have twice as much throughput on the five gigahertz platform, um, which is also a wider channel. There's, there's more channels on the five gigahertz platform than the 2.4 gigahertz frequency. Um, there's only three channels, one, six, and 11 on 2.4, so it's very congested, um, which is why the newer devices like five gigahertz. Um, a lot of your streaming devices, your, your Roku sticks, your smart TVs, your Apple phones, um, they prefer five gigahertz for that reason. 
um, there's more uh, channels, less congestion, and it's faster. But it's a weaker signal than the 2.4. So the goal is to have one of these with line of sight to every camper. Um, that's the only way it will work. Um, that's the only way you can advertise that you're going to get Wi-Fi at your site. Um, so oftentimes, depending on the size of the campground, um, you know, we might need 10 of these um, or we might need we've got campgrounds that's got 40 or 50 of these. Um, so it depends on the size of your campground and the layout. Um, sometimes if we can get higher on poles, we can get better line of sight. Um, sometimes that's not an option. They need to be lower um, and at different angles to reach all the cameras. So it really depends on the campground. Uh, in this video later on, we'll talk about heat maps that we use um, that can basically put these in your campground at different locations, and it will show us the coverage, um, the signal strength, and the DBMs um, based on that map. Uh, Wi-Fi is kind of a science. It's not like, okay, let's put one on the store, let's put it at the pool, let's put it on this bathhouse, and we'll be golden. Um, that's not the way it works. You need to use heat maps, and it's very complex. Um, the other thing that we do different today than we did years ago, um, years ago when we talked about the big access points, we could also do what was called mesh um, or a point to multi point um, Wi Fi. And we found out early on that that's not going to work um, with streaming. Uh, it's just not a good true solution. Basically, mesh or point to multi point is you have one of these access points um, that basically acts as a, a command unit. And you could connect four, five, six access points to this. And basically they just bounce off of each other, okay? And every time one goes to another to another, um, you lose throughput, okay? It's not a direct connection anymore. Um, so instead of this being able to distribute 1200 Mbps on the five gigahertz frequency, um, you're dividing that by three. And, and at the end of the line, you've got an access point here um, that can distribute 25 Mbps, which is enough to stream on, what, three devices? So if more than three clients connect to this and try to stream, they're just going to crash. Or they're going to get error messages up on their device saying, I can't connect to the Internet. Um, and we see it a lot in campgrounds um, because they're not set up. properly. So we don't do mesh. We don't do point to multipoint anymore. We do what's called point to point, okay? What point to point is, is it utilizes bridges, okay? A bridge is a device like this, like an end station 5AC. And you would have one of these bridges um, at the source of the internet. So somewhere in the campground and marina, we have a modem from Atlantic Broadband, from Spectrum, from an internet service provider. And that modem, uh, or fiber switch is going to supply us the internet for our marina or campground. Um, so we have, we employ a one of our switches, a, a cloud-based ingenious switch, um, and connect it to that modem or fiber switch or router. Um, and that switch that we install controls our Wi-Fi. So each of these point-to-point -point dishes um, needs to be plugged directly into that that bridge that has direct feed from your internet service provider. And we point this line of sight uh, as the transmitting device on the camp store or the marina office um, to a pole um, or bathhouse, pool house. Um, in the marina, it could be a pole on the on, on a slip. Um, could be multiple things. Could be a fuel station. Um, we, we put one of these as a receiver. Okay. And what that does is create a high-speed bridge, point-to-point, -point, line of sight, from the switch on the Internet service provider to our access point. So on the pole out in the campground and marina, um, we're going to have a receiving one of these that is connected directly to the access point. Okay, And then our next access point, um, at the next location, we'll have the same thing. It will have a bridge shooting from the main store to a bridge receiving the signal at the access point location. So if we have 10 access points at the facility, then we need what? We need 20 bridges, right? We 
need a set of bridges for each access point, a transmitting and a receiving to ensure these have line of sight. Now we do get into cost effectiveness, okay? And people have budgets. Um, so there are times when we have point to point to one of these, and maybe there is a campsite or a slip that is kind of in a remote spot. And we know there's only gonna be one or two, maybe three campers max in that area. And it's not really cost effective to run another set of bridges for that one location. So these can still go into mesh mode for isolated situations like that, okay? We, we can still do that. But the main tier needs to be point to point, point to point technology when you want a band. And if you need to mesh off one or two of these, maybe three for isolated locations where we're gonna have a couple of campers uh, or boats, then we can do that. Again, it goes to cost effectiveness. We want point to point. Um, sometimes, you know, we can stretch with the um, uh, with the mesh or the point to multi point. Um, again, it depends on the scenario, and um, we certainly decide that stuff during the consultation when we look at budgeting and stuff like that. Um, so that's how we set it up: point to point, smaller access points. We want more smaller access points instead of a couple of big expensive ones that that isn't going to be able to get to all of our all of our locations. Okay, these are very durable. We've had these um, in marinas um, for six or eight years without a problem. Um, they're IP67 weather rated, um, so, are, so are the bridges. They last a long time. So that is how we employ the access points. Um, we're going to talk now um, about determining where these go. Right? We need to use our heat map planner tool. Um, and I'll show you an example of that. And that will indicate to us where we need these throughout the facility. And we'll also talk about our cloud management tool within Genius. We have cloud-based controllers um, that monitor these access points all the time. They're not standalone anymore. You just don't put them up and hope that they work. Um, they need to be hooked to a controller that is continuously monitoring the environment. Um, the controller will actually switch channels on these um, because the environment in the campground changes. This might be up in, in you know, on channel 147 on the, or 149 in the 5 gigahertz platform, and you have a camper parked right beside it. And that camper might have its own modem or routing device. They might have a camp pro device um, that is on the same channel as the access point. In the past, if we're not cloud managed and this is standalone, it's going to be on the same channel as the unit right beside it. That's going to cause big problems in the campground. Okay, this isn't going to be able to function properly in that environment. So the cloud, by the scanning, recognizes that device and switches the channel of this, um, which is great. We can also see how many clients are on it. Um, we can do band steering. Um, we can do what's called fast roaming. So if you're logged in on this access point, but then you go to the pool or you drive to the fuel rock in the marina, um, your phone or your client or your, you know, your laptop stays connected. Okay, that's called fast roaming. So there's many advantages to the cloud. Also, because of the cost associated with the stuff, we're seeing a lot of our campgrounds and marinas, probably 70% of them now, have a payment portal and they charge um, campers for usage um, of their Wi-Fi on a daily, weekly, monthly, and seasonal basis. And that helps you generate revenue um, to, to pay for this equipment. Typically, in a normal scenario, in two to three seasons in a campground, uh, Wi-Fi sales will pay for the hardware, uh, pays for your system. After that, it's, it's a profit. It's, it's profit margin for the campground. It's revenue. Um, so, so you want to consider that as well. Um, there's splash screens that welcome people. You can advertise events um, all through that portal. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to talk about the Wi-Fi planner and how we determine where to put these in the campground and marina um, and a little bit more about cloud management. Okay. Okay. So here is our heat map tool, and this is a one of our existing campgrounds up in, in Naples, Maine. Um, but as you can see, um, 
he's got, I guess, 12 access points, something like that. Um, but we want them um, in such a fashion that each camper uh, or campsite has line of sight to the access point. In other words, if you're on any site, you can see one of these. And that is how a good Wi-Fi system is designed. People will tell you that they work good through trees, um, that, that they can go through a rec hall, all that type of stuff. Um, if you want good Wi-Fi, you need line of sight. Okay, so what we can do is employ these in places where we think we have good line of sight. And we use Google Earth to do that. When we use our heat map tool, um, which is right here, it shows us how are those are going to perform in the campground. And not to get too much into Wi-Fi, but it is measured on an RSSI scale by DBMs. Okay. And what DBMs are our signal strength. And they go from zero DBMs to minus 100 DBMs. Zero is absolute strength. Okay. And minus 100 is Wi-Fi so weak that you can't use it. And in the middle, there is a sweet spot. Okay. Um, maybe from minus 35 to about minus 70. That is ideal Wi-Fi. Anything stronger than 35 can be a problem. Um, and anything, you know, higher than 75, so 75 to 100, is so weak it's unusable. Okay. So really what we're looking for is red and yellow everywhere. Right? This green here can be, you know, all the way to minus 65. Um, but blue... Um, would be 70 okay and we don't want any blue in the campground we want red and yellow so this is how we use a, a heat map and we try to base it off of 5 gigahertz um, because as you can see if we click on 2.4 it's much stronger okay everywhere is in red with 2.4 which is great you know that's a minus 40 minus 45 signal um, the issue is a lot of the newer devices don't want 2.4 it's congested. There aren't a lot of channels. Um, it's not as fast. So we want to plan our campgrounds by using the 5G model, which again is weaker, um, but it's faster with more channels. It's less congested. So anywhere we point, we want to be within that minus 60 frame. There's minus 50, minus 50. Okay. So that's how Easy Planner is used. When we do a consultation and we come out to the campground or marina, we use this map and, and we put our access points and use heat map technology to make sure that we are covered. Okay, moving along to the Ingenious Cloud. Um, this is our cloud-based controller and it monitors our system. Um, we are in New Hampshire and it is winter time. Um, so in this campground, it looks like um, just the staff is there. Um, this one access point is actually at the marina and it's unplugged. So it is offline, but it's not. Um, so what this tells us is how many access points are in the facility. Okay, we have nine access points and we have three clients or users, which this time of year... Um, would be the staff and it shows you what frequency that those users are on and again it shows us what we're using for bandwidth um, it'll also show um, our top access points this lets us know which ones are used the most um, looks like main office is 40 percent or 38 percent marina is 28 um, lodge is 14 percent and so forth shows you the types of devices that are being connected um, that's an iPhone, an Android phone, Fi-Fi, Galaxy, um, so on and so forth. It will show you your upload and your downloads. Um, but the main thing to know about this um, is from a control management standpoint, it lets us know that the access points are online. Um, if there comes a point when we have to reboot one um, or change a channel, 
um, or any of that stuff. We can do all of that um, from in here. Um, but yeah, this is the management tool. Um, this is where we set up the broadcast SSIDs, where we configure the individual access points, um, where, where we do everything. We talked about the auto adjusting um, of the channels based on air congestion, um, and this is where that's done. We can leave our RXTX power on auto. We can turn it up for some access points or down for others based on the environment. Um, we can just do a bunch of things. So um, again, we're not going to go into too much detail with the cloud. Um, that's more of us um, managing your system. But, but it's important to know the controller is in the cloud and the access points are continually being monitored um, by this cloud-based controller. Okay, I think that about wraps up our presentation. Um, we went over the types of access points, um, the dual band access points that we use in a campground or marina environment. Um, we went over the um, heat map, the planner tool that we use to um, kind of engineer the system and figure out where we need each access point, where it's going to be effective in that environment. And we went over our cloud management tool that we use to ensure that our devices are online, that they're up to date, that they automatically update when firmware upgrades are available, that they're steering the environment all of the time and adjusting as necessary. And um, we hope the information was useful to you. Um, we hope that the video was informative to you. And we look forward uh, to hearing from you soon and seeing you out in the campgrounds.